Today we're the judge and the jury because we're going to give our most petty cards we wish could be banned in Magic the Gathering. And I'm going to start off with Leyline Binding. When this thing first got played against me and it stole my creature for one mana, I'm like, what is going on here? It's an enchantment with flash and it costs one less to cast for each basic land type among lands you control. Which, by the way, in 2024 is meaningless. One fetch into a triome and then fetch into a shock. I mean, you absolutely have Leyline Binding online by at least turn two and easily every other turn of the game. Just for one mana. Oh, by the way, in like modern and legacy, two color decks just easily splash a triome or two in order to enable this thing. So it's not like you have to build a whole oh, super fancy five color deck around it. And it it exiles almost anything. Uh, enters the battlefield to exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls. So the artifacts and enchantments is like a Swiss army knife that you can play for one mana. This card is absolutely ridiculous. That being said, it's an enchantment, so you could blow it up later. It's not even not even the most scariest thing. But holy crap, am I upset by this one removal spell. So, and when it eats my ether vial, I'm even more angry. My ether vial. Happy April 1st! I didn't know this is something that we celebrate around here. Remember, it's got to be petty cards. Petty cards. Cyclonic Rift, not petty. Alright? Mm. Everyone knows about Cyclonic Rift. There's a lot... The, ba the, the people are asking for Cyclonic Rift to be banned. It's a very long list. Very, very long list. Let's look at Abzos. Feed the Swarm. So, black cannot deal with enchantment. <laughs> See, now that's what I'm talking about. Feed the Swarm. Black one generic sorcery. Destroy target creature or enchantment and opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanent's mana value. I remember so many people got mad that this card exists because it's, um, uh, black's not supposed to destroy enchantments. They shouldn't have access to that. That's a color pie break. Well, like, every color can do anything but at a cost. You know, blue can deal dam direct damage to you, but usually has to deal more damage to themselves. So anyway, yeah, destroy target creature or an enchantment. That actually makes it super flexible. So I'm sure they're, you know, finally we have a way of dealing with, you know, Rhystic Study and also the Leyline Binding. The Leyline Binding will be binding for very long. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna lose quite a bit of life. You're gonna get smacked in the face if you wanna hit that Leyline Binding. Cost one mana for them, cost six life for you. All right, next up, let's take a look at uh, J-Hogue with uh, Grief. Absolute BS that they can start the game with a double thought seize. Honestly, this is not very petty, but you super chatted it, so you get it anyway. So you want if you want to you want to get Cyclonic Rift on the show, you gotta super chat it. That's how you do it. BS they can start the game with a double thought seize many games and you you're lost before you could play anything. Uh, is it double thought? Yeah, it's double thought seize. It's triple thought seize now with Ephemerate. Now what they what Jay means is that in uh, both modern and legacy. Grief is a 3-2 menace creature, and when it enters the battlefield, uh, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards the, that card. This card has been wrecking the competitive uh, environment for about a year and a half now uh, because they double it with cards like uh, Not Dead After All, I believe it's called. I don't remember these enablers. Yeah, so it's a black instant. Until end of turn, target creature gains. If it dies, it comes back with a plus one, plus one. Uh, so anyway, enters the battlefield, you strip your opponent of a card. They can't do anything about it. They're tapped out. This is turn one, mind you. Uh, and then you bring it back with not dead after all. It comes back, you strip another card for them. So two important cards, usually removal spells for your grief. And it's a 4-3 creature. And they just like smack you over and over again till you're dead. Usually you can feel the five. You feel the, you feel the threat, the pressure when the grief is out. Christopher B's Orem's Chant. Oh, you don't want uh, combo decks stifling you for that one turn? Because this is mostly a combo card, right? Orem's Chant. Basically declaring, because for a white instant with a kicker of white, target player can't play spells this turn. With a kicker is paid, creatures can't attack this turn. I'm going to combo off. Do you have any response? Does anyone would like to do anything? What would you like to do in response to my Orem's Chant? Because after that, you can't do anything. Oh, it's interesting. Target player can't play spells this turn. So you can only you actually can only target one player with counter spells. Or one player with interaction. 
I thought it was all opponents. It's like knowing uh, everyone but you, all opponents can't play spells this turn. So you gotta get the Orm's Chant actually has to be used correctly. You choose wisely. The player with the blue cards and the islands and so on. El Winter, I think the Tron land should be banned. Let's look at Urza's Tower. We got a lot of uh, we got a lot of modern hate around here. Just hate the concept of getting seven mana with three lands. Urza's Tower, Urza's Mind, Urza's Power Plant, and boom, you've got Tron online. But they did ban it, El Winter. That's why they made Pioneer. Frankly, Pioneer was just a format born out of everyone who didn't like complain about the Tron lands, Mox Opal, speed, Faithless Looting, all the speed of the format. You don't like if you don't like the power level, of the format, Prime Evil Titan, you just go play Pioneer. Do you play Pioneer, El Winter? Have you found your home over there? Okay, next up we got Rated Lex. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your super chat, Stasis, because you hate the art. That is. And a very alternative reason for hating stasis. It's just a blue one generic. Now, this is powerful. I mean, I would bet 5% hate this card for the art. The other 95% hate it for, you know, the words that are attached to it. Players skip their untapped steps, and at the beginning of your upkeep, sack stasis unless you pay a blue. And of course, our combos build around this card that allow you to basically uh, lock your opponents out for forever. I like the art, to be honest. Uh, there's a lot of art I hate out there, but this one I like. I, it's weird. It's weird and funky and has nothing to do with the card. You know what? I don't mind if they do that once in a while. Dear Alex, mana drain, counter a spell and gaining mana. <laughs> it is banned in, believe it or not. Believe it or not, Dear Alex, this is a banned in a format. It's banned in Legacy. So, and, for, and I actually, I'm not sure if it should be banned in Legacy, but whatever it is, banned in Legacy. Blue, blue, instant. Counter a spell at the beginning of your next main phase at an amount of colorless equal to your, that spell's mana value. And you can sync that into, like, All is Dust, Karn the Great Creator. Well, I don't know, Hunt, Ugin the Spirit Dragon. I'm trying to think of, like, really good ways to sync all that colorless mana to something. Maybe a big walking ballista. But whatever, like, it is, it is blue ramp. This is the quintessential blue ramp that has existed since Legends. Very funny card. Speaking of all his dust, Balder doesn't like all his dust. You don't like your permanence being sacrificed, do you? The seven, seven, uh, sorry, the seven mana Eldrazi sorcery. Uh, each player sacrifices all permanents they control that are one or more colors. So you might have, you know, there are so many niche cards that are indestructible and you might think, oh, well, okay, nothing will stop me now. Well, no, uh, all is dust. And all of a sudden you have to sack everything. Sack all your creatures. Not the and all sorry, all your creatures, your artifacts, your enchantments that are of a color. Um uh what else? Planeswalkers. Battles? Then you have to sacrifice battles? You gotta sack it all. Get it out of here. So Oracle or the mana rocks in command. What mana rocks? Oh, you mean like Soul Ring or something like that? Or like the two mana rock. Now that would be a hot take. Get rid of get rid of like command was it command sphere? I have a feeling No, that's definitely not what you're thinking of. That was not what you're thinking of. Okay, next up. Uh we have a super chat coming from Alpha Nerd. Venerated Rot Priest. Wow, who hurt you? Like to know what this origin story is. Venerated Rot Priest, a green 1-2 Frexian Druid with Toxic 1. Whenever a player, uh, well, sorry, whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or ability, target opponent gets a poison counter. So effectively, I mean, you get this thing out, you target it with like a million cards, whether it be, like, it could be pump spells, for example, or cards that chain and draw into other cards. You keep giving your opponent, uh, poison counters, you, and you could, in theory, kill off your opponent without even attacking. You don't even have to do anything. Venerated Rot Priest just sat there rotting away. It is possible. They can play in one turn, so you can't counter. You target it with removal. They play protected, You and you just got two counters. Oh, and then, like, is, is it all over from there? Then it's proliferate for victory. We got TGPH, Jeweled Lotus. Oh, my goodness. 
This might be in the category of people who do not like... You know what? I like Jeweled Lotus. I never got to play with Black Lotus. This is my only way of ever getting to get a taste of Black Lotus in my life. It's a zero mana artifact. Tap, sacrifice Jeweled Lotus. Add three mana of any one color. Spend this mana only to cast your commander. And it's balanced because it's good for monocolor commanders, but not as good for multicolor commanders. But it depends on the mana cost. If they have a lot of colorless, then yeah, Jeweled Lotus works all the same. Sure there. I don't know, you let me know in the comment section. You love you love uh Jeweled Lotus, you hate Jeweled Lotus. I have fun with this damn thing. It not danger? No. It okay, let me see. It danger. These cards are danger. This is Black Lotus for crying out loud. It's lit it is literally Black Lotus. A little bit more narrow, but for the thing what matters most in Commander? Your commander! I mean, you built the deck around it. What else do you want to play Black Lotus for? It would be it would be for your commander. If you had Black Lotus in your deck, you would also sacrifice it to play your commander. So Jeweled Lotus is just a way of cheeky way of getting people to play with Black Lotus in 2024. When did they print this thing? 2023? Something like that? Jim Bean says, you're back. Who said I was gone? I wasn't gone anywhere. Okay, uh, if Jeweled Lotus was accessible for everyone, it'd be fine, but it's not. Look, hold on, where do I have it on me? Where is... Ugh, one of these Jace the Mind Sculpt... No, I'm not gonna look. One of, one of these Jace the Mind Sculptors has like a bl Black Lotus drawn on them on the back. That's all you have to do. You honestly don't have to use a Jace the Mind Sculptor to do it, but you know. I'm just saying, you're proxying things and it's not that expensive. Okay, next up, let's take a look at... Oh, Necropotence. Necropotence. This card is, this card is danger. It's danger for like years. Black, black, black enchantment, skip your draw step. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. Pay a life, exile the top card of your library face down. Put a, uh, put that card into your hand at the beginning of your end, next end step. Like, they already know Yawgmoth's bargain is broken, but somehow it's like, okay, Yawgmoth's bargain, that's busted, but Necropotence, that's completely fine. If I played black, that would be a snap include. Is there a single black deck? Is that, this is a good question. Is there a single deck in black in, in Commander that does not want to play Necropotence? I'm, pretty, I'm sure the answer is yes to somewhere, but like, this card's insane. I mean, it's basically three mana. You draw seven at end of turn, sure, but like, whatever. It's not, it's not like EDH is over, in, it's, it's not like EDH is going to be over by next rotation. I mean, you're little, you're probably going to live by next turn. Yogmoths will screw this card in EDH. Bargain was supposed to be the fixed Necropotence. Yeah, yeah, the fixed Necropotence. It just became more dangerous. Alright, next up. Um... Uh, okay, hold on, let's get to a super chat. John with Primal Surge. As soon as it hits, it hits the stack. The game ends. Build a $15 deck around this card and my friends hate it. Sorry, hold on. are you saying you're the person who plays the Primal Scourge, John? Is that what you're trying to tell me over here? Uh, okay, green, green, a generic sorcery. Exile the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you may put it onto the battlefield if you do repeat the process. I recall a few five zeros online that played Primal Surge. It's not completely ridiculous. EDH is still very expensive to build. You're not wrong. I mean, if yeah, every card in the deck was at least $1, you're looking at at least $100. And we all know that it's more expensive than $100. Uh, next up, let's take a look at... Ooh, Dothy Voidwalker, why is that? Why, because you can't block it? Petty reason, I play a lot of... Gra <laughs> okay, simple as that. Your graveyard play... Yeah, the graveyard player hates the player playing Dothy Voidwalker. Lay a line of the void on a stick. And what else? Um... It's basically like a, tr it's almost like a, tr I look at it like a true name nemesis at two mana. Now it's not indestructible, you can just kill the damn thing. But, uh, it is unblockable. It's unblockable three power. I think that's pretty good. 
Okay, next up. Pacers fan forever with uh, Yogma Thren Physician. Screw this card in modern. I don't hate, I don't like looking at this card either. Four mana for a two, four protection from humans. That's how they balance it, so you can't put any counters on itself. Because you can pay a life, sack another creature, put a minus one, minus one counter on up to one target creature, and draw a card. Black, black, discard a card, you also proliferate. If they have enough creatures out, you're basically dead. Very often when Yawgmoth hits the battlefield, basically the game is over. I mean, sometimes it can be close. I have seen a Yawgmoth player draw a bunch of trash. Uh, and I was able to carry that to, to victory. Also, if you if their life total is really low when they get Yawgmoth out, maybe it can't like go off. But there are still a lot of creature combos to help it like basically combo off even at two life. So being at almost nothing still means nothing to the Yawgmoth player. Uh, let's take a look at. Ryan Harris, Ragavan. No, that's that is not petty. People have been calling for Ragavan's banning for I don't know since it got printed. A lot of people hate Ragavan. Also, Orcish Bowmaster is also not petty enough. We want petty cards. I haven't heard anyone call for Yogmoth. To honest, I've never heard a single person call for Yogmoth's banning, so I'll, I'll, it will qualify. Here is a wild one: Jin Gataxius, Core Augur. Why? 10 mana, 5, 4, flash. At the beginning of your end step, you draw 7 cards. Each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by 7 cards. So if this is on the battlefield, uh, yeah, you get nothing. <laughs> you, you're going to have nothing for the rest of the game, and the Jin Kataxius player has everything for the rest of the game. What a horrible way to, what a horrible way to slowly lose to death. Okay, Jay's back with a horde of notions. What is this all about? Just because my friend has a commander deck with this, and they always have it in play by turn three. At the latest! I can't even chump it! It's a five mana, five, five. Vigilance, Trample, Haste, Elemental. Pay five. You may play target Elemental card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. So just have Elementals in the graveyard, and you're, you're gravy. So hold on, if they, so if they ramp into this, assuming they have the mana, I guess they will just wreck you for the rest of the game? That, no, they, they can't start bringing anything out immediately. Whatever. I don't know what your experience is, but I will trust that the horde of notions you can't de you can't deal with trample or vigilance or haste apparently. Dinglebay with coma. Cosmos serpent. Uh, it's my brother's only commander. It turns our game into arch enemy every time. You know what? I just played against this card myself for the first time last weekend. And uh, I understand. So it's seven mana for a six-six serpent that can't be countered. Um, I'd use unsubstantiated on it, I think, once. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a three-three blue serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. So they every upkeep, pass the turn, I get a three-three serpent. Pass the turn, I get another three-three serpent. Pass the turn, I get another three-three serpent. So you sack a serpent and tar tap target permanent, including lands. Its activated abilities can't be activated this turn, so you can turn off other creatures. And it, and you can also sack um, one of those creatures so that Coma's indestructible until end of turn. Actually, complete... I don't know if it's broken, but like it, 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 I agree. It also turned the game into Arch Enemy. Okay, next up, let's take a look at uh, Ryan Kelly with Crater Hoof. Ooh, a classic. So you want people to win the old-fashioned way, huh? Oh, you made five 1-1 one, one tokens, now you win. Exactly. The moment Crater Hoof enters the battlefield, it's all over. Eight mana for a 5-5 five, five haste, and it just blast you. Hey, no, it's funny, I thought Commander players liked more of these cards. Where, I mean, maybe you're describing, like, Legacy, where you don't need that many resources, but, like, you want to win the game. Crater Hoof is, like, a way of, like, winning the, ending the game, so we can play another one. Oh, it's a big board stall. How's anyone going to finish them off? Oh, good, the Crater Hoof finally hit. You got, like, 50 tokens. Got plus 50, plus 50 for everything. All right, swing and win. Swing and it's over. 
There are a lot of board wipes and graveyard hate, but farewell especially can go egg. <laughs> farewell can go exile itself. All right, a six mana sorcery. Yeah, people are pretty heated about this. You get to choose one or more. It's like the board wipe of all board wipes. Exile all, all, all artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and graveyards. And of course, you can choose exactly what you want, what benefits you and screws everyone else the most. Oh, you built a, a board of mostly artifacts and enchantments? Well, you can just ruin the graveyards and creatures. Next up with Alpha Alphard with Shieldred. Shieldred. Too powerful for cost. For four mana, we have a five. Is it banned anywhere? It's actually banned nowhere. Oh, I always thought it was banned in standard. The four mana, four or five with death touch. Uh, you draw a card, you gain two life. When the opponent draws a card, oh, they lose two life. This is uh, quite. What kind of deal is this? No! Please, Not no. to mention, Shieldred combos with a lot of cards that require you to like pay life to draw cards. So if you've got like, I, actually it doesn't combo with Necropotence, does it? Because you don't actually technically draw cards off of that. But say like uh, even Yawgmoth, for example, as you draw cards, paying life, you gain two life, so you net more life, which then can be used like used to pay for your uh, Yawgmoth in the future. And then just drain every. Uh, well, I guess not drain everyone yet, but uh, you know, uh, gain gain infinite life. Well, and then almost infinite cards. Okay, next up, we'll take a look at Crowcar Games Displacer Kitten, the card that gets out of control if you don't control it. The Blinker, the four mana two two can't beast. It's got avoidance. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, exile up to one target. Non-land permit you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Blink at will. And all I have to do is cast a non-creature spell to do anything. I, um, I go to draw a card. I bolt this. I draw two, discard two. And you start blinking. I don't know how you lose to this thing, but I will assume it's in the most disgusting way possible. We got meddling mage. Sorry, Toad's meddling mage. Why? It's like, I guess, screw you, I scoop. So you're a combo player, Toads. Is that what you're telling me? Meddling mage, name Thassa's Oracle. All right, how how do you plan on winning the game now? Blue white two two creature. Uh, enters the battlefield. Name a card, and the spells can't be played with the chosen card name. I would think it's like a lot weaker in Commander though, because you don't have, what's it called? Um, you only have one of every card. So you name that one card, you have to make it count. Chaos Fellow with Vorinclex. I might not understand this one. I know this is like a hot card. Okay, what am I, what am I missing? This card, as far as I know, sees no play in competitive format nothing but it's like been there's like a million printings of it and it's like at least 46 dollars what what does this thing even do six mana six six trample haste if uh you put one or more counters on a permanent or player put twice that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead oh so it's like a super hardened scales if an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, they put half that many of each of those kind of counters on that permanent or player instead rounded down. Oh, I can have all the counters. You can have no counters. So it's one of those sort of cards. Doesn't see play because it's banned. Is it banned? No, it's not banned. It's not legal. Uh, this is Kaldheim. It must have cycled out by now. See, it's, it's legal everywhere. It can be legal. I don't know. Was it banned in, mo it was it banned in standard? Maybe. Maybe it was. Yesus! With the super chat. Thank you very much. White Sun's Twilight. I hate the Uno reverse card. I didn't even know we had an Uno reverse, uh, an Uno reverse card in Magic. Okay. Uh, white, white, X. Sorcery. You gain X life. Create X, 1-1, one, one, colorless, Phyrexian, might, artifact, creature tokens with toxic one. And this creature can't block. If X is five or more, just... Whoa! Whoa! Slow down there! We're gonna destroy all the creatures. We're gonna, and all that's gonna be left are like the one-one mites. Uh, okay, let's take one from Turat. A boreal grazer. Hot take. 
Boreal Grazer. Because I'm playing Rogue Kindred in Pioneer, and it blocked pretty much everything in my deck. You know what, Turiot? There has been this really strong parallel between Arboreal Grazer and another card called Mox Diamond. Some might say, what's the difference between these two cards? Mox Diamond says, enters the battlefield, you may discard a land card. Um, in, uh, you may discard a land card instead. If you do, put Mox Diamond onto the battlefield. If you don't bury it, then you tap to add it one mana of, uh, of any color. Uh, and Arboreal Grazer says, when enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. So effectively, what you do is for one green, you get a 0-3 reaching Mox Diamond. So instead of discarding the land to your graveyard or discarding the card to your graveyard, you're discarding like a land into play, also ramping, even though the thing comes into play tapped. <laughs> old boy's like, I can't think of a card that I want banned. Well, it sounds like, sounds like you're a purist, old boy. You want every card legal. Do you want to bring more cards off the banned list? Pacers fan forever with uh, Past in Flames. card that ha I don't think has hurt anybody, at least not in competitive formats for 10 years, maybe 8 years. I hate playing against Storm Mo in Modern. Well, I have some good news for you. Uh, Storm in Modern barely exists. It, it's like, it is completely dismantled to nothing. You don't have to worry about them flashing back and storming you out for victory. Abraxos, ban the color green. Agreed. I'm just kidding. I need green players. So I can counter their spells and laugh at them while I do it. Okay, um, Arcanus Ultra with Slicer. Hired Muscle. Uh, it's so annoying in Commander, can do 21 Commander damage in one turn, spread out but still. How does that work? Okay, it's got, oh, Double Strike? Oh, I, oh, so, huh? Okay, so for five mana, we have a three, four with double strike and haste. So we can deal six damage. That's four turns. Well, and you said can deal 21 in one turn, spread out. Oh, over four turns. So, but it gets it. It's like in multiples of three. Okay, whatever. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you may have that player gain control of Slicer until end of turn. If you do, untap Slicer, go to, and it can't be sacrificed this turn. If you don't, convert it. It can turn into a 3-2 living metal first strike haste, and whenever it uh, deals combat damage to a player, convert it at end of combat. So, like, it deals damage in increments of threes, hence it can deal 21 points of damage, eventually. I think, I thought I read everything. So you go, yeah, you give it to somebody else, you go to. So you can't, they can't attack the original person. Yet. Rustic study, not a hot, not a very petty band suggestion. Every, you know, there was like a big hoopla on Twitter like a few weeks ago about getting Rhystic Study banned. And then the RC said, no, you suck it up. You live with that Rhystic Study. Rhystic Study goes nowhere. I own a Rhystic Study, so uh, I am uh, very in favor of keeping it around. Good afternoon, MTG Gaming Bob. Cunning Linguist, Fable of the Mirror ba Breaker. Fable of the Mirror. This is one of those cards that is so damn strong, but not strong enough to get banned. It is played everywhere. Is there a format this card doesn't see play? I don't think so. I think it probably sees play. It's probably saw play in Standard. So it sees play in Pioneer, Modern, Legacy. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't see play in Vintage. Maybe it'll slow for Vintage. Fable is banned in Standard. Oh my god, you're right! You are absolutely right. I don't play attention, obviously don't pay attention to standard. Not a standard player. Okay, so it did see so much play in standard that it got the axe! It's uh, effectively like a planeswalker that turns into a creature. And it's plus one is zero. And uh, you get a two, two red goblin shaman. You, it's a planeswalker you can't even kill. Doesn't have loyalty. They should have. They should have ratted this thing to have some loyalty on it, so you can like break the mirror and get it out of here. Then it like fixes your hand by looting, and then um, or like rummaging, and then uh, you can bring back a Kiki Jiki. What the hell's up with that? That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. 
So anyway, if you these cards are too strong, you want to get them at FusionGamingOnline.com. Also, uh, Fusion Open happening April 27th to 28th. Uh, the 27th is Modern. 28th is Pioneer. I'll be playing in both of them. I'm already preparing a Pioneer Merfolk deck for that event. Also, don't forget, Outlaws of Thunder Junction is coming right, right around the corner. If there are any singles being spoiled that you want to get, pre-order them at uh, FusionGamingOnline.com. Don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu, though, to get 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Manage Raiders, the premier place for renting magic cards online. I'm going to have to go to edit something. Hold on. So where I test all my cards before I take them to a competitive event. Because I don't know if the cards will work. And if they don't work, I'm not going to buy them. But once I know they work, I'm going to buy them in paper. And I do that by renting my uh, digital cards online for Magic Online with Mana Traders. So you can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below. Or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore FL0. Also looks like flow. Everything flows better when you're renting with Mana Traders. All right, next up, let's take a look at Bacon, Catbug, Ban Island, Island, or Blue Man in general. I hate blue. I love blue. Keep the island around. What if the island went on the reserve list? What would happen? How high do we think this the island would get to? Okay, we'll go to another super chat immediately after that. Uh, Alpha Nerd, Philidor. Felidor Sovereign? Is it Felidar? I think it's Felidar Sovereign. Because uh, it's a dumb guy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It's like uh, 6 mana, 4-6. Vigilance lifelink. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 40 or more life, you win the game. But you started the game with 40 life. Uh, this is very, very funny. I, this, this, is this... Like, I, obviously, it's not broken. Because it's like only two and a half dollars. If this card was actually broken, it'd probably be banned by now. But I guess it's just as easy enough. Well, if you get this out like super fast, would you win? Like what? Like there's hardly any direct damage in Commander, right? Like hardly anything. If you attack into the Philidar Sovereign, they're going to gain at least four life. Interesting. Snail says, I won with Sovereign yesterday. All right, we already got proof. Card is absolutely busted. Broken as hell. Uh, next up, let's like uh, Abraxos Ban Omnath. I don't know which one you're talking about, but I'm gonna assume it's the big one, the Locus of Creation. I'm surprised it's legal everywhere still, especially even in Pioneer. Four mana, four four. Uh, when enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. If the first land you play is played this turn, you get four life. If the second land enters the battlefield, you get four mana. Now in Pioneer, at least this is a little curved because there's not so many fetch lands. In Pioneer, there's very, very few fetch lands. Very, very few good ones, at least. And uh, if you can get a third land out on the same turn, uh, you can deal four damage to each opponent and older Planeswalkers. Band in Standard? Doesn't even exist in Standard anymore. Add a rotation. It was banned, though, at that time. Uh, the whole idea of gaining for a life of turn, that's uh, just a little absurd. Okay, next super chat we got from Paces Fan Forever. I uh, hate playing against Narset Parter of Veils. This is a four. Okay, this is a three mana uh, Narset. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So if you depend on card draw in any way, uh, no, you are de denied. <laughs> also, people can sculpt really good board positions by playing Narset into. Time Twister, Windfall, Wheel of Fortune. Screw everyone on what they can draw. You get one card. I get everything. Effectively. Okay, Almond says, I'm the reason Dranith Magistrate is banned in my... <laughs> that is a weird one. I do have to... Okay, so this is... Uh, this is a strange card to be legal. But at the same time, it's like, it's just a creature. It, like, literally dies to everything. It, to a brisk breeze. It's, it's not a very, like, it's a three toughness creature. It's like, it doesn't have the text indestructible or hexproof or anything. Yeah, just kill it. Use a board wipe. 
It's as simple as that. Phones can't play, cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Uh, next up, Alpha Nerd with, uh, we got Monster Swift Spear. You know what? I was about to start the show off with this one. I decided to switch it around to, um, uh, Leyline Binding. It's a one mana, one, two, haste with prowess. Now, to be, pr to proof that this card is damn powerful, it's banned in Popper. Okay? It's banned. It's banned in at least one format. This card does not BS around. It can deal a lot of damage in a very short period of time if they're chaining a lot of spells together. So, very impossible to block. The attack for one into your, like, two or three, three creature, and you're just like, I can't block. Right? I just can't block. You're not going to let me block. Okay, next up. Um... Spectral Maniac, Bland, Grand... <laughs> Grand Arbiter Augustine the Fourth. Get him out of here. You know, it's funny you say that. My friend plays this card. And my other friend hates it so much that my my the my friend that plays Grand Arbiter just like cannot play this deck while the guy's around. Just cannot do it. Yeah, it's a four mana two three. White spells you cast cost one less to cast. Blue spells you cast cost one less to cast. Spells your opponents cast cost one more to cast. Uh and like And then this Grand Arbiter friend even said, well, you want to make a house rule that, like, Jeweled Lotus is banned, so I can't get Grand Arbiter out on turn one? And we're like, no, we want to play with our Jeweled Lotus. So, anyway, this this card... I have no problem with it. Honestly, I really don't care. It's no big deal to me. If you want it to tax us up. Okay, the game is too cheap as it is. Just ban everything one mana and less. Then the, then the game will begin. And we'll play with a real game of strategy. Turn ma turn magic to a real game of chess around here. Um, Pedgeman, do we do to to fairy? Hey, that stuff in every format I I saw it in. I don't know if this is a really petty suggestion. A lot of people hate this card. I, maybe at this point it is. People are calling for Teferi's banning. Well, it is banned in Pioneer. Um, calling for its banning and basically every format but now now magic the gathering is so damn powerful that we just don't even care anymore like this is the least of our worries each opponent can't cast spells only sorry each opponent can cast spells only anytime they could cast a sorcery like this is like far beyond the least of our it's like far beyond the our worries at this point so anyway Next up, J Ho with Vendillion Click. You don't say. Hated when fairies was tier zero. So like, what you can't like let go of this or something? You want this banned for what it did to you like 15 years ago, or were it like 20 years ago? Can't remember when Morning Tide came out. When it was Morning Tide, 2008. Yeah, 16 years ago. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so let, let, why don't we just make banned suggestions? Like, we'll, like um, Wizards, I want you to ban Richard and Port. Well, why? Because of what it did to me 20 years ago. That's why. That's right. We should just do it. That's how we should decide the ban list. For history's sake. You said petty. You're right. I did say petty. I, I didn't know if it was going to be that petty. That's almost insignificant. It doesn't even do anything to you anymore. <laughs> okay, next up. I saw a pretty good suggestion here. Where was it? It was... Um... Did I see one? Oh, maybe I missed it. <laughs> ban Painter Servant so Iona can be unbanned. They did ban Painter Servant. Then they unbanned the damn thing. Oh, here's an interesting one. Glacial Chasm. Glacial Chasm. In the right deck, it is. All right, so it's a land with commutative upkeep of two. When it comes into play, sack a land. Creatures you control can't attack. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. You can't touch this. 
for as long as things in play screws over so this see ever they were just talking about one someone was saying like ban armageddon um but you know we need armageddon for the glacial chasm so what you're telling me is you don't have any wasteland dust bowl uh strip mine in your deck there's nothing wrong with strip mine in your deck all right be okay with strip mine you don't have to use it on their basic land you know, I was threatening my opponent the other day with strip mine. You know, like, it, it was, uh, it was a, you know, it was a, it was a friend who doesn't like their lands getting blown up, and I told them very clearly, "You kill my creature, I blow up your land." Needless to say, my creature did not die. That's how you, that's how you control people, all right? That's a free one from Nikachu. You, you don't play strip mine. To actually destroy people's lands, you threaten them. It's like, if you touch this enchantment, I'm blowing up your triome. I'm blowing up your basic. I see your little light on lands. Well, make sure you don't make sure you don't do anything on my side of the board over here, alright? And we're gonna be fine. It's like a nuclear weapon you don't actually ever launch. Okay, next super chat we got from Steve Cooper. Oh, also of course donating. Leyline of Sanctity. Well, we can't have people dealing direct damage now, can we? Uh, you have a good explanation. You play Rakdos Spellslinger. Get after idiot. Oh, I see. Um. Oh, are you, oh so you're the Rakdos Spellslinger player? Is what you're telling me? And your opponent plays Leyline of Sanctity on, like, turn one and says, Well, GG! You're basically lost at this point. I think you can still play Grief, though, right? You can still play Grief. We'll just do nothing. Just have a cr creature and play for free. Uh, Alan Baird with a Fierce Guardianship. Free counter spells. Free counter... No, at no cost to cards, either. It's just a three mana instant. If you control a commander, just play your spell, counter anything. Mm. You got a spell? No, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm. T are you tapped out? Yes. You have one card in hand? Yes. Well, it can't be force and negation. It cannot be force of will. It cannot even be subtlety. All right, cast, uh, I don't know, all is dust. Fierce guardianship. Damn it! Easily. Okay, next up. Uh... Oh, yeah, we have two freebies from here. Uh, who hasn't got a card yet? I see a lot. I see a lot of repeaters around here. Okay, Crocor Games with Smothering Rug is disgusting. I play it, I would know, and it's colorless. It's a three mana one three construct with flying. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose one life for each spell they've cast this turn. Oh, it's interesting. Okay, so it's like anti storm hate almost. Maybe not storm, but like if you want to do a lot of things in one turn, it's gonna punish you, and anyone can play it. Maybe it's an underrated card. It's so underrated, Crocor Games wants it banned. Most petty cards to have to be banned. Fury is not a well. Fury is not a petty card. Also, it is banned. Uh, okay, one more super chat. If you ask my playgroup, they would probably want Hokori Dusk Drinker banned. Hokori. Dusk Drinker. Drink up, Hokori. This thing, the format 2 2 that lands don't untap during their controller's untap steps, people are really sensitive about their lands. Don't play so many lands, just play a bunch of artifacts then, and then get screwed by Collector Roof. Alright, next super chat we got from another from Pacers fan forever. Which is Narset, Enlightened Master. Need H, it has hex proof. Not hex proof? What are we ever gonna do? Okay, six mana, three, two human monk, first strike hex proof. And when it attacks, exile the top four cards of your library. Until end of turn, you may cast non creature spells from among those cards without paying their mana cost. Doesn't, isn't this supposed to like loop? With like uh, getting extra turn cards and extra turn cards and eventually uh, something of that effect? It's got, there was like some weird combo with Narset and Lightning Master. I don't know, don't know exactly how it works though. Uh, probably really frustrating. If, if, if it does combo off, that's probably a frustrating way to lose. Especially since 
Yeah, hexproof. So, I mean, it's board wipe or nothing. But it's six mana, so, I mean, you're in board wipe range. Okay, Soft Feather. Does send uh, triplets uh, or Armageddon? I would. Uh, Armageddon, no. Send triplets. Uh, I would say this definitely qualifies. This is a 5 mana 3 3 human wizard. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose a target opponent. Th uh, this turn, that player can't cast spells or activated abilities and plays with their hand revealed. You may play lands and cast spells from that player's hand this turn. Absolutely. So what? Uh, you just ha hate this card, like playing your cards? Don't you touch my cards. I bought my cards for me to play, not for you to play. Adam, hello, take care of yourself. Brethren in Christ, it's me, Ada Adas. Oh, Adas. Welcome, Adas. Uh... Cunning Linguist, Psychic Venom. Used to make me seethe. Like, whoa, back, way back in the day. Two man enchant land. Whenever enchant land becomes tapped, it, de it will deal two damage. Uh, to that land's controller. It's very similar to... Uh, there's like something like that you put on a swamp or something to that effect these days. Softfeather says, Yeah, I have my own deck. You have your own. <laughs> In response to the send triplets. Stop playing my cards. Oh, it must be... It must, it must really burn you when you buy your new $50 card and they play it and not you. They, got to, they get to cast your new card for the first time. All right, Beanpot, Boseju who endures. Because it kills Blood Moon. It uh, does a lot of things. Do you know what? There is a little bit of uh, backlash against this card because it renders like disenchant useless. It's a land that taps for a green under no conditions, by the way, just enters the battlefield tap for a green but you can channel it to destroy an artifact enchantment or non-basic land which includes the creature lands uh and they look for a land of course and put it onto the battlefield untapped it costs one less to activate for each legendary you control it doesn't matter it's, it's, two is pretty cheap as it is but um uh yeah boseju it's uh i don't even see disenchant i hardly see artifact and enchantment removal in sideboards anymore outside of like force of vigor because that's like the big one uh, because Bosejo is just the utility of it is so good. We got uh, Blink Somniac Helix Pinnacle. You don't like win conditions. Win cards make strategies boring in green decks too fast, especially in the elf ramp decks. Elves are like getting to a hundred mana, like on their own. That's impressive. That's an that's an achievement unlocked. I thought this is strictly for infinite combo decks. It's a green enchantment, shroud, uh, X, put X tower counters on your helix pinnacle, and at the of your upkeep, if there are 100 or more tower counters on it, you win the game. Funny, 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 funny. Joel Robinson, perplexing chimera, really? Turn the game into politics. Uh, doesn't every card in Commander do that? The 5 mana 3 3, whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may exchange. Uh, control of Perplexing Chimera and that spell. If you do, you may choose new targets for the spell. So how does it work? Okay, so like, basically everyone gets a piece of garbage afterwards. So you have to kill this thing. It's like, someone has an incentive to kill the Chimera in order to get your thing to resolve and come to play under your control. Funny card. Cunning Linguist. Toxroll the Corrosive. Oh, the slug thing. 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven slug horror. At the beginning of each end step, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. Creatures you don't control get minus 1-1 one, minus one for each slime counter on them. And then whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create a 1-1 one, one black slug creature token. You can sack your slugs to draw a card. Funny stuff. You can change the kill spell, though. Huh? Whenever an opponent casts a spell... Oh, it's any spell! Holy moly! So like, okay, so whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may exchange control. So I give them the Chimera, and then I can choose new targets for the spell. So like, okay, I'm going to kill something else. 
Or I can agree to kill the stupid Chimera. Because maybe it also is a absolute pain for me. You're gonna have to make it a, you have to make an agreement with the group. I've got a kill spell. I can kill this Chimera. Is anyone gonna stop me here? Especially the person controlling the Chimera. Alright, next up. Tuxeril is a D-Bay. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Almond does not like graveyard hate. Rest in peace. I found the graveyard hate player. It's graveyard deck's worst nightmare. You better believe it. <laughs> Exiles all the graveyards. Anything new going there? Also gone. What's there is gone, and what's future? What the, what's going there in the future is also gone. Uh, okay, next up. Avatar, whoa, Dr. Madison Lee, too much value. Dr. Madison Lee is a three mana two three human scientist. Oh no, it's energy. For anyone that remembers energy in standard. Uh, okay, whenever you cast an artifact spell, you get an energy. This most this is the most efficient, perhaps best energy card ever printed ever. Uh, tap, pay an energy, target creature gets plus one plus zero and gains trample. And haste until end of turn. Also tap, pay three energy, draw a card, and also pay four energy, tap it. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tap! That's absolutely bonkers. This is actually a lot of value. And all I have to do is cast artifacts. So, like, what if you're looping artifacts? Looping, as in, like, artifact goes back to your hand, you get to recast it, you get a bunch of mana. It, like, just, just goes infinite. I don't know what it would go... I guess it would infinitely attack something. I guess it doesn't really go infinite, infinite. You can only attack with one creature. <laughs> Banofsky is like, good morning, coffeeers. Uh, what's with the stupid chimera there? We're all, we're calling for the most petty cards to get banned. An Abraxas Mage says, Possibility Storm. Not because it's broken, because it's annoying, probably. Five mana enchantment whenever a player casts a spell from their hand. They exile it and exiles cards on the top of their library until they exile a card that shares a card type with it. And then you can cast that card instead. So basically, everything in your hand, you don't know it. It could be anything. The possibilities are endless. It is a, st you might even say it's a storm of possibilities. Why did they print more energy cards? Didn't we have enough? Well, the cards honestly sucked. They weren't very good. They were only good in standard because there was like no answer to energy cards. Uh, okay, Yo-Yo says, Fate Spinner is for losers. That what you're implying, yo yo, is that you won <laughs> with Fate Spinner. Sorry, were you winning with Fate Spinner or were you the loser? So, Fate Spinner, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, it's funny, it's you only give up one part of your turn. You, they choose draw step, main phase, or combat phase. The player skips each instant of the chosen step or phase this turn. Just choose, I don't know. If you don't have no creatures in play, choose combat step. If you got creatures in play, choose main phase. It's awkward though. You love everything. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> You are the one? You're the one who plays Fate Spinner? I'm not now I'm a little confused what the meaning of this is. So you're the one playing Fate Spinner. Oh, are you telling me you're a loser figuratively, not literally? Is that the deal? Because it's so broken? <laughs> we did send triplets. Wow, you people really hate your send triplets. I didn't know there was so much hate for send triplets. It, look, it looks like such a mundane card to me. Like, it's completely meaningless. It's like, all right, send triplets. Go for it. Do whatever you want. Toilet duck. Oops, I'm literally looking up toilet duck. Rad storm. Let's you get any planeswalker ultimate quickly. A danger. Rad storm, the four mana instant with storm. And proliferate. I think there's another card that also gets you to um, ultimate. There's like a card that doubles the counters. I think, uh, what's it called? Um, I think it's the green. It's one of those green enchantments. If a card enters the battlefield with counters, double them. This is actually uh, gets it with extra steps. Also, this could also uh, potentially kill you. 
you have enough poison counters on you. Guess we have to ban Toilet Duck now. T toilet Duck, too strong. Way too strong. Okay, so Avatar Woe says, uh, Send Triplets is literally a commander mind slaver. Oh, maybe I missed the part where it's a commander. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's legendary. Commander players hate it so much. I had no idea. Yeah, and I guess you kill it and it comes back. And again, you'll take it'll take your turn. This turn, that player can't cast spells or activate abilities and plays with their hand revealed. You may play lands and cast spells from that player's hand this turn. Uh... All right, we have some super chats. John with natural affinity. I think that's the, it turns your lands into two, two creatures. Uh, in response to a bar, board wipe is gross. Oh, so you don't, so you don't like, not only do you not like Armageddon, you like the long way of Armageddon. Natural affinity, instant. Uh, until end of turn, all lands become two, two creatures that are still lands. And really no fault to you either. It could be someone like, okay, I play for well, destroy all creatures. In response, someone else plays natural affinity. And then all of a sudden, the farewell player uh, regrets their life's, their life's choices. Old boy says, triplets aren't that good, but people somehow get emotional when you cast their stuff. Oh, yeah. It's just like, it's the same thing like the milling. Oh, you mill my good card away. You know, all that stuff. People want to play their cards. Don't touch my cards. Re with weather the storm. Of all the life gain cards, is this like even a big deal? Two man instant. You gain, you gain three life. Storm, whenever you cast the spell, copy it for each spell cast before it this turn. You gain a good chunk of life. It's not going to win you the game or anything, but okay. I guess you're the burn player. Uh, Docta with Archive Trap. Competitive MTG hates it because you could mill someone in one. It is possible. I have got, I've been gotten got by Archive Trap. Five mana, it's a, it's a trap. If an opponent search their library this turn, you may pay zero rather than pay Archive Trap's mana cost. And you get to dump 13 cards of their library into their graveyard. That doesn't sound like a lot to commander players, but listen to this. All right, you start the game. We're going to bring out Nikachu's calculator here. Almost every deck in competitive magic basically starts at about 53 cards because you draw your seven card hand. Okay, let's take on average you'll mulligan at least once. Let's say the deck has 54 cards. Let's divide it by 13. That means in like basically four archive traps, you're dead. I mean, it's over. So if they have one or two, that's like half your life total to a mill player. Uh, next super chat from Cunning Linguist. Oh, Opposition Agent. Again, the people just don't like their cards getting touched. Don't touch my cards. Three mana, three, two, human rogue with flash. You control your opponents while they search their libraries. Just don't search your library. It's as simple as that. I guess the problem is it's got flash. So you like, you don't even see it coming when it's coming. That's the uh, that's the bottom line around here. And then while they're searching the library, you can exile each card they find. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast them. Cyclonograph, not a hot take. Well, it was well, it's been mentioned several times, but it's like it's not very petty. A lot of people want Cyclonic Rift banned. What's up with this? Uh, Bitter Blossom? What, for Commander? This card sees no play otherwise. Two mana, Fairy Enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, uh, lose one life and create a 1-1 one, one Black Fairy Rogue creature token with flying. Sure, have it for Commander. Actually, it looks pretty damn good for Commander. You have 40 life. Use it for something. Tony the Pokemon guy, the way to counter people taking your cards is just, just just to play super bad ones. Ooh, that's big brain thinking. Can't play my good cards if I don't have any good cards in my deck. That's big brain thinking, Tony. 
Well, let's take one from... They will not get one card yet. Take another one from Arcanus, I guess. There's a new commander that's so busted. Obeka. You're going to ban the car the commander that just came out? Splitter of seconds? Does she have split second? Four mana for a 2-5 Ogre Warlock. Menace. Splitter of seconds deals combat damage to a player. You get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase. Oh! That could, that could be busted. He had a, a extra upkeeps. Whenever you have an upkeep, this triggers. Whenever you have another upkeep, this triggers. It'll trigger for forever. That's pretty damn good. Muhammad! Decree of Annihilation combined with Gabby is annoying. Let's look at Decree of Annihilation. Decree of Annihilation. Uh, 10, ma 10 mana. Removal artifacts, creatures, lands, graveyards, and hands from the game. You could also cycle it for seven. When you cycle it, you just blow up all the lands instead. Uh, land destruction. Not sure how it combos with Navi, to be honest. Uh, we have Elixir with uh, Thought Distortion. Annoys me so much. It's just six mana. Uh, okay, so we've got six mana sorcery. Oh, it can't be countered. All right, I'm already on board with you. Uh, target opponent reveals their hand. Exile all non-creature, non-land cards from that player's hand in graveyard. It's six mana! It's also one opponent! That's wild. This is very petty. I don't even know where this is good. Anyway, say Turgrid yet? You have. I, actually, I think a lot of people mention Turgrid. What is the problem with this card? Okay, it's 5 mana for a 4-5 god with menace. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card, you may put a card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Oh. So basically, you make your opponent sack stuff or discard stuff. Um, and then you can bring stuff from the graveyard back uh, to the battlefield under your control. That's like... Very punishing reanimator in some sense. But if you want to play this card, you have to be in mono black. And the other side is uh oh, it's the Turgrid's Lantern. Tap target player loses three life unless they sacrifice an online permanent or discard a card, and also four mana. Untap Turgrid's Lantern. Turgrid lets you play duress and thought season commander for value. Yes! For value! That's the whole point. They need to look, look, everyone. That's the that is the secret. That's the secret conspiracy theory by Wizards of the Coast. They're like, how do we get these staples in Modern, Pioneer, and Legacy to see play in Commander? Well, we have to build Commanders that would make it useful to do that. It's only, there's only one way. How do we make Thoughts he's good in Commander? It's Turgrid. That's how they did it. And they succeeded perfectly. Pacers fan forever. Let's appropriate. Because it takes forever in EDH, what, uh, to, to vote? Uh, nine mana, starting with you, uh, each player votes for time or money. Then for each time vote, oh yeah, you get the for each time vote, they'll take an extra turn and then waste more time. For each money vote, choose a perm owned by the voter and gain control of it. Everyone should just agree to vote for uh, money. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Ban every version of Teferi. Well, I don't know if every version is that powerful. Okay, Alpha Nerd, what you, what's up? Uh, you've got Notorious Throng. Four mana, uh, Rogue Sorcery with Prowl of six mana. You may cast this co cast this for its Prowl cost if you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with a Rogue. Create X11 Black Fairy Rogue Creature Tokens with Flying, where X is the damage dealt to your opponents this turn. If the spell's prowl cost was paid, take an extra turn after this one. Ah, another take your t take an extra turn card. For four mana, add that. Oh, but it's the prowl cost. You have to play the prowl cost to make this work. That's weird. It's funny, Almond, you're not the first person to say Dothy Voidwalker. We got that earlier in the show. Cunning Linguist with, uh, Null Rod. I guess Collector Oof is also in the same vein, huh? Cunning Linguist. To let me, I want to play my Jeweled Lotus, my Mana Crypt, my Mana Vault. I paid good money for these things, damn it. 
And you destroy it with this null rod. Someone paid good money for that null rod too, though, you know. Next, we got Alpha Nerds. I agree with Carlo. Gaia's Blessing. Uh, I'm gonna have to look that one up. Gaia's... Oh, I, I think I... You spelled it a lot wrong, but I know... Hold on. G-A-E? There we go. Gaia's Blessing. Oh, so what? Like, because you can't mill summon out? It's a two-mana sorcery. Target player shuffles up to three target cards from their graveyard into their library. Draw a card. It's got this extra ability that when it's put into your graveyard from the library, you get to shuffle your whole graveyard into your library. So if you're literally, if you're literally trying to mill someone out, well, Guy's Blessing is going to have... Guy's Blessing has a response. Yeah, absolutely kills mill decks. And Kagan, we've got donate if done, but imprisoned in the moon. My friend locked my commander. Oh yeah, imprisoned in the moon. Three, uh, it's three mana or aura. Enchant creature, land or planeswalker. Enchant permanent is a colorless land with tap, add a colorless, and lose all uh, other card types and abilities. It makes me wonder. Maybe we should have a show about how to lock commanders out of the game. Like, usually, if it gets destroyed or exiled, you have the option to put it back in the command zone. What are all the ways to basically neuter a commander? Even, like, with pacifism, for example. You answered my commander, and now I can't really get it back. Because it's stuck there. Yeah, the moon. So big and so powerful. And such a prison. Big enough for Emrakul. Banovsky! Uh, <clears throat> love your shows, Nikachu. Your format Zybers. Thank you very much, Banovsky. I appreciate it. I also think my format Zybers. And the rest of the coffee crew here agrees as well. Alright, so that's definitely going to get donated. Uh, I love... Let's get... Did anyone not get one? Ban to fairy Jace for Blue Emperor? What? I have no idea what the hell that means. I don't see anyone n n any new uh, any new suggestions here, so just have to go with somebody who's suggested a million cards at this point. The Winds of Change. David Sampson. Turn one is the trollest move in MTG of all formats. The Winds of Change. I'm gonna write down. I'm gonna have that show about the commander cards tomorrow. Are we gonna see Winds of Change or what? Okay, Winds of Change is a red sorcery. Each player shuffles the cards from his or her hand into his or her library, then draws that many cards. But why? Each player... Oh, that's interesting. It's like you force everyone to take a mulligan. You, like, force people to take a free mulligan, and they may not even know what they want. Oh, my goodness. All of a sudden, we're gambling here. I like my hand. It's winds of change. If you thought the wind was good for you, we'll think again. Yeah, everyone thought that. It's like everyone kept their... When they draw that many cards. Wow, so if they mulligan to five, they don't even get to draw up to seven. Cool. The general. We got Frexian Obliterator. Unfun to play against. Oh, you should have seen how unfun to, this card was to play against it, like, eight years ago. There used to not be anything they could deal with it outside of, like, Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares. Four mana, five, five, Frexian Horror would trample. Whenever a source that deals damage to Frexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. Uh, these days, there's, like, a lot of answers. Still, I, you know, I don't blame you. It's not... If they just sit with this thing on defense, I mean... I'm not going to attack into it. Yeah, that's as good as gold. It's like a wall of denial. Archon of Cruelty. From Cunning Linguist.
I don't know if we're here. I don't think we're there yet at all. But I mean, I, I guess not. It, there, there's probably no chance of this actually getting banned. Like, you know, uh, Grizzlebrand's not banned. Uh, Atrax is not banned yet. Actually, is Atrax a banned? I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up later. It just enters the bat. It's like, a, but it is like the win condition for a lot of reanimator decks. Because like the val... There's a lot of ways of dealing with a lot of reanimator creatures after they've resolved. But this one's really hard to deal with. It's just like so much value that it doesn't win on the spot. But it basically wins on the spot. Like you're not going to come back from it. And then you just die. You know, this is supposed to be super chat time. But I'm going to take this one from Matt. Curse of the Swine. I remember I had a friend who was very upset by this card. That blue had an exile creature effect. Blue, blue, X, exile, X target creatures. For each creature exiled this way, its controller creates a 2 2 green boar creature token. I think because they had a bunch of like indestructible cards and they assume they're indestructible creatures and they just assume it's like they're, they're not going to die to anything, especially from blue. Kagan, meanwhile, I annoy my friends with Lisa, uh, Shroud of Dusk. Five mana, five, five angel. Rather than bait two, for each previous time you've cast this spell from your the, the command zone this game, pay to life that many times. Oh, so you don't have to pay any mana or any extra mana. Uh, you do have to pay, you do have to pay a lot of life. What? Flying, lifelink. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose two life. Oh, God. What? And you at least gain some life back with the lifelink. Sick card. It's fair for the price. So it's not very fair for everyone else. It's like whenever a player casts a spell. This is the uh, Eidolon of the Great Rebel in Orzov, I guess. The Orzov one. Ooh, rough. Back to basics. I run that card myself. Giving blue land hate. Yeah, you better believe it. You better believe we got some land hate going on. Blue to generic enchantment. Non-basic lands don't untap during their controllers. Untap steps. I forced my friends to play with more basics because of this card. That's right. You can't you can't be playing with all non-basics. All right. You got to balance out your deck around here. You never know when someone's going to slam a blood moon. All right. Back to basics. Got to go back to the basics. I love the I love the name of the card, too. It's like it's figurative and it's literal. Because the only thing that's going to work are your basic lands. And they had they had that pun as far as Urza Saga. Way back in Urza Saga. They are making good jokes back then. Okay, Cunning Linguist with uh, Sarah's Emissary. Uh, this is a feel-bad card. Yeah, this is a feel-bad card when this comes out. Especially if you're all in on one card type. 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, heirs of the battlefield, choose a card type. Usually creatures, you and uh, creatures you control have protection from the chosen card type. Saw Feather says there was this one card a member of my old pod used to play. I can't remember the name, but it was a red enchantment. If you tap a land for mana, everything is tapped. Same with attacking creatures. Oh, I, 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 I'm I, familiar with the card you're talking about. I also don't know what the card name is. Do not know. Okay, Alpha Nerd Edgar Markov. Oh, this thing! Oh, 100%! Get it out of here! Edgar Markov. This is... This card is insane. You just don't play it. Forget all the words down here. It's just eminence. Whenever you cast another vampire smell, if, if Edgar Markov is in the command zone or on the battlefield, you create a 1-1 one, one black vampire creature token. There has never been a card... Uh, how do I put it? Ed Edgar Markov is an excellent example of a card that you do not want to play. Like, what's the point of that? It's just this weird... It's It, it, it could be as good as a... Um, an emblem. It's literally an emblem you start with the beginning of the game. That's how I look at this card. Uh, let's take a look at... The General's Winter Orb. How many people like playing against this card? 
Two mana artifact, as long as it's untapped, players can untap more than one land each uh, during their untap steps. But at least you get to untap it. All right, back to basics says they're locked forever. So you just enjoy your land. You enjoy them one at a time. You also get to make land drops, so that works too. Okay, also Alpha Nerd with uh, ban four drop power creep. It makes standard crappier. Pfft, I don't think they're going to do that at all. Oh, King Jr. I was going to give that one to you. I was going to give that one. Okay, I'm going to give... That was, That last one was like uh, basically a donation. So I'll give it to... Who wants it? Christopher B., you're like just change... Like you want the whole game banned or something? War's Toll. What is this about? Christopher B., usually spinning out tons of cards. You have. I guess you have like this super long ban list. Okay, Wolver's Toll is a four man enchantment. Whenever an opponent taps a land for mana. Oh, t here we go. Thank you so much, Christopher B., uh, for finding this card. Christopher B. is the encyclopedia of Magic the Gathering, encapsulated into a human being. Well, for all I know, Christopher B. is a bot. Uh, that is a, it's a very smart AI listening in on our, our conversations here. If a creature an opponent controls attacks, all creatures that opponent controls attack if able. So you attack with one, you attack with all. You um, uh, you tap with not you you tap a land you tap with all you tap all lands. Man, this show is going on forever. Declaration of not. I don't know why. Oh, f your commander! I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I, I forgot that commander players um hate this card specifically. Cards. Stone Cold Trash in Competitive Magic. But, well, I've actually seen a little bit of play in Competitive Magic. Just, you know, some control players are going to, like, get angry at me. But, yeah, two mana. Comes to play. Name a card. Your commander. I know it's in you. That's the most important card in your deck. And I know it's waiting to be played at any moment. And then you just pay a blue counter target spell with that name. Just make sure you don't name Coma. All right? Don't make that. Don't make the same mistake Nikachu did. Don't make the same mistake. Okay, next up, we look at Cunning Linguist's Carpet of Flowers. Ooh. Yeah, you're the blue player, and they, you got, their opponent goes turn one Carpet of Flowers. It's like they've armageddon you before the game has started. It's a weird green enchantment during your main, during your main phase. You may... Hold on, no. I don't think it's worded like that. It has an errata. At the beginning of each of your main phases, if you hadn't added mana with this ability this turn, you may add X... Man of any one color where X is the number of islands target opponent controls. So all you need... Is this, like, worth just playing in the main, hoping you play against, like, a blue deck? Like, what are the odds there's going to be no blue deck in the pod? Because, like, it, it gains an absurd amount of mana around here. Just absolute stupid amounts of mana for one green mana. It's really disgusting. Uh... Okay, another one for Alpha Nerd. And Zag. And Axbane Ferox. Gone through all the super chats, damn it. I'm running out of sound effects here. And Zrag. Which one? I'm assuming. This one? And I don't know exactly what the, the focus was on. We have four mana for an 8-4 Mole God. Anzrag, the Quake Mole, becomes blocked. Untap uh, each creature you control. After this combat phase, there's an additional combat phase. Oh, is this actually good? I remember everyone was, like, super unhappy that this card was going to come into existence. I don't know. Maybe it was as bad as everyone thought it was going to be. And then for seven mana, Anzrag must be blocked each, each combat this turn. If you use the good old lure... Uh, okay, next super chat. We've done this one. We did Loke. Uh, oh, maybe we didn't do the other one. Omnath. Locus of Eternity. Huh? Locus of Eternity, brand new card. It's not even out yet, and you want it banned? It's so new, it's not even on Scryfall. I kid you not. We don't have a Locus of Eternity. Omnath. 
Can I just put like Omnath Eternity? No. Sorry, it don't exist. Doesn't exist yet, Pace was fan forever. Is it like in the cowboy set? Or is it in the Wild West set, I should say? Oh, it's an April Fool's show. Oh. <laughs> you got me. Alright. Here. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting trolled all over the place here. It's a good day for the trolls anyway. It's April 1st. Okay, we'll donate to Hefty Itali. Primal Conqueror. Oh, you don't like the idea? Or I don't know. There's some people who say they do, they don't even play the flip side of this. It's just a seven mana seven seven with trample. ETB each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an online card, and you can get to cast those cards without paying their mana cost. Strong card again. Playing your deck. People don't like other people playing their deck. I want to play my deck. Hence why I built my deck. My deck is my deck, and your deck is your deck. Get your hands off my deck. All right, that's it for today. I think it was a pretty good show. Maybe we'll do this like once every half a year, or maybe once every. Uh, whoops. Uh, maybe once every six months or something like that. And if you want to be part of the show, you got to be here at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Be there or be square. Thanks to everyone who supports the show. If you're a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to be part of the show or help super chat so other people can be part of the show. And thank you so much, my coffee crew, for being here this morning because without you, I'd have nothing. We got to thank Procore Games, Toads, Almond, Abraxas. Erland, uh, Toads, David Sampson, Old Boy, Avatar of Woe, uh, Steve Cooper, David Jass Ree, The General, Mr. Deadhead, <laughs> Dinglebag, Turiot, who are we missing here? Christopher B, Atraxa, Grand Unifier. Hold on, I'll just show this one. Isn't that. Oh, this one, yeah. Everyone hates Atraxa. The con it's actually taking over every single format that it exists in. Anyway, thank you very much, Coffee Crew, for being here today. And as usual, my Coffee Crew, keep brewing up them coffees, and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.